This is the continues of previous video. If you haven't checked our previous video, please don't forget to check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe our channel to get more interesting real life documentaries. This is Life Hack. Let's get into the video. On June 12, in 1976, neighbors of Blanche Kimball contacted the authorities, having not seen the 70 year old Blanche Kimball living in Augusta in her resident for days. When police arrived at Kimball home, they were treated to a brutal murder scene. Kimball was dead on the floor, her blood splattered everywhere, and she has been attacked several times. The investigation turned toward 27-year-old drifter Robert Wilson, who had briefly lived in Kimball home before the murder. Shortly thereafter, Wilson has left the town and went to somewhere else. Since the prime suspect could not be found, Blanche Kimball murder seemed destined to remain unsolved forever. In 2010, old man Gary Robb got into an altercation with a man which ended up with Robb slashing the man's stomach. No charges were filed because the victim could not be located, but the police entered Rob knife into evidence and made a surprising discovery. DNA on the knife matched blood from Blanche Kimball murder scene. Gary Robb was actually Robert Wilson and had been in and out of prison since leaving Augusta in 1976. After learning of this development, state police asked the authorities to get a DNA sample from Robert Wilson to definitively tie him to the murder. They decided to take DNA test without knowing to Robert Wilson, in a graceful manner instead of directly inquiring him. After finding Robert wandering the streets, an undercover officer paid him to participate in a fake chewing gum survey, which involved Robert putting different flavors of chewing gums in his mouth. The police saved the gum and used it to obtain Robert's DNA. When the DNA linked him to the Kimball murder scene in October 2012, Robert was arrested and charged with the crime after 36 years. When arresting his age was more than 70. Police Charles Joseph was one month away from retirement. On a routine, near a lake, Joseph spoke for backup, stating that he was in hot pursuit of three suspicious unidentified men. When backup arrived, they heard a gunshot in the woods and found Joseph lying dead on the ground. He had been shot twice, once in his bulletproof vest, once in his head. Instead of enjoying his well-earned retirement, the officer was buried with full honors, with an 18-mile funeral procession in tow. But they soon found out that everything they knew about Joseph was a lie. The FBI investigated Joseph's death, and soon realized his personal life was all manners of shady. His personnel file alluded to several severe acts of misconduct, and there was a lot of talk on his Facebook page about an upcoming audit that had scared him senseless. Meanwhile, his cell phone records showed him milling around the scene of the chase for half an hour before he called for backup, and forensic evidence showed that the two shots came from a surprisingly close distance. About arm length, in fact, it didn't take long for the feds to complete the puzzle, the audit was about to reveal his dirty deeds, so he tried to hire a gang member to kill the local official about to expose him as one does. When that fell through, Joseph, who had a lot of experience staging crime scenes, decided to commit suicide in a way that would look like he would been killed by some criminal scumbag. Unfortunately his plan went wrong. A dead body of Darush was scooped out of the river, near in southwest Poland by fishermen, in December 2000, four weeks after going missing. The police tests revealed that he was stripped almost naked and tortured. His wrist had been bound behind his back and tied to a noose around his neck, and he was dumped in the river. Due to lack of evidence, the case was dropped by the police and remained unsolved for three years. Christian, a Polish author, wrote a crime novel in 2003 which quickly became a bestseller in Poland. It gripped the nation and received a lot of publicity, however police found many of the details about the murder in the novel very familiar. The description of the murder was remarkably similar to what they knew about an unsolved case on their books, The Torture and Murder of Darius, 
When reaching Christian's residence he was not there and seems to be in abroad. In 2005 he was arrested by the police, however due to insufficient evidence he was released after three days. Police decided to dig a bit deeper, and discovered that, Christian had known the dead man. He has telephoned him around the time of his disappearance, and had then sold the dead man's mobile phone on the internet, within the days of the murder. Finally Christian was arrested and sentenced to 25 years in prison. <laughs> 53-year-old Michael Anthony from North Carolina, USA walked into a Walmart store and bought a vacuum cleaner and microwave for $476. So far nothing wrong with that, right? Well, Michael attempted to pay for his purchases using a million dollar note from the game Monopoly. After demanding change of $999,524 from the cashier, the police were promptly called and he was arrested. He was charged with attempting to obtain property by fake money. What do you think of these, unbelievable and funny incidents? Comment your thoughts below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.